All right, so you are now attending Navigating the Cybersecurity Labyrinth, Choose Your Own Security Adventure. Uh, the first thing I'd like to point out is because I am an independent consultant and I am here as my own business is with Stan Security, um, nothing that I say on the stage will ever be endorsed by any of my employers, okay? So we're just getting that out of the way here to start with. Uh, my name is James and because of that, I go by Punk Coder. Um, I spent 15 years as a software developer. I did have done the last seven or eight, nine, ten, something like that as a security professional in AppSec. Um, but this talk isn't about me. It's about you. And I want to make that very clear because this entire conversation is, you know, me kind of reflecting back over the things that have happened to me and what we've done to get here and what the future needs to look like. So this is a conversation about exploits. Sorry, I'm not going to be dropping any zero days on you. Code, AppSec, and maybe some memes. Yeah? So this has been a tough couple of years for all of us. For those of you who recognize this, this is the image of what happened in the world whenever we had the breached forums who went offline because they were taken down by the United States government. Then within 48 hours, we're back online again only to be taken down another 72 hours later, only to come back 24 hours later after that. I feel like this has been tough no matter what side of any of this you're on. If you're red team, your app sec, it doesn't matter. It's all been tough. In top of that, we're dealing with things left over from the pandemic where all of our lives changed and cybersecurity ine inevitably changed because of this, okay? It's been tough because this has also been the last year of breaches. Like this isn't even a full list. This is just kind of the big ones, okay? And they barely fit on my screen. But did we stand up and say enough is enough? Nope. Quick, everybody get the servers back online, get back to business. It's all just pace after another, one after another, and we continue along the speed. And everybody likes a joke. The number of times that I've seen this set up because humor is how we deal with it, right? We saw this come out and came out and this was originally because of a node library that was a problem. And then we had the log4j incident and it became the poster child for log4j. And then we had the CrowdStrike issue come out and it became the poster child for CrowdStrike, right? That tire, you know, we always talk about the little block that's down there that's possibly going to be the end of it. But in this case, it was the giant block. They took 8.5 million computers off the machine, off of the world, critical infrastructure, and then a couple weeks later had a giant banner just across the street at this previous cons uh, conference at Black Hat advertising. And you know what? Their booth was filled. And sometimes we reveled in the fact that we were running stuff so old we couldn't be impacted by it. There were people who were absolutely proud of the fact that this didn't happen at Southwest Airlines because they were running Windows 3.1, okay? Now, we have things that we are trying to do in this space to make things better. There are people who are fighting the good fight and trying to go for this stuff. NIST has done a fantastic job of going through and saying, hey, we've got the secure by design guidelines. How many people have heard or read the secure by design guidelines published by CISA? How many of you have actually talked to your developers about them? Uh, did your response look like this? I was told you will take C away from me when you pry it from my cold dead hands. No matter how hard we push for rust, this is what we're up against. And to show you the other side of this conversation, how desperate the other side of this is, this is the group of signatories for the secure by design paper. Saying this is what we need to do. Uh, last time I checked, we were up to 12 foreign countries, including every major security agency in the United States. And the answer to this was, you will take C from me when you pry it from my cold, dead hands. 
So where does this leave us? We keep trading long-term success for short-term wins. I don't think I'm alone in this in saying that we can't continue down this path. Like cybersecurity cannot continue down this path. And that's part of the reason that I'm up here giving this conversation because we end up with things like this. Anybody spot what's missing in this? What's missing in this is the human being, okay? Because we have continued to go round cycle after cycle after cycle thinking that one more piece of software will fix the issue. Okay? And we here in the AppSec have a, a particularly difficult challenge. Okay? You can go to three different managers and ask them, what does AppSec mean? And you know what answer you get? Get this one. AppSec is the process of finding and fixing and preventing security vulnerabilities in application level in hardware, software, and development processes. It includes guidance on measures for applications designing and developing through the whole life cycle, including after the application has launched. You know why you get that answer? Because that's the first answer you get when you type what is AppSec into Google. Our bosses don't understand what it is that we do. I know as in the 15 years I was a software developer, like my boss kind of understood what I did. I moved over for several years doing cybersecurity. I can guarantee you my boss didn't understand what it was that we did, okay? And the worst part about this is the longer that we go along this, the crazier the headlines get. Like this is not a sustainable path. Okay, but I will say, I don't wanna go full gloom and doom on this because there have been good things that have come out of this. If you do not follow Inspirational Skeletor, I strongly suggest that you do. As an InfoSec person, this has kept me in a sane, rational position for far longer than it should have. And when this doesn't work, I go to therapy, okay? And I can tell you, the people that I interact with, and I, I say this specifically because I think it's important for us to address mental health and normalize it, okay? Because the work that we do in AppSec and in cybersecurity, a lot of times is thankless work with long hours and stressful issues. There is no shame in saying, hey, I need somebody to talk to about this, okay? But this leads down a whole series of paths and questions, right? We've gone the full spectrum from where all of this is, what we think will actually fix it, and how we cope with this situation. But that's not what this talk is about. This talk is about trying to figure out the answers to some of the questions that will determine your future, my future, and our future together collectively, okay? Because realistically speaking, the people who are making the difference are sitting in this room. My boss doesn't understand what it was. I pointed out a couple things that became an issue later on and my boss went, wow, that's a really good job. You should do that long-term, cool, okay? So this is gonna lead you to a series of questions and I want, we're gonna do a little voting. This is gonna be a little interactive, do something fun, hack a little slideshow, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna pop up a question. We're gonna talk about pros and cons and I'm gonna have you vote. And we're gonna go in a direction. So the easy one, because it's fun for us all to sit back and kind of be angry at it right now. Uh, AI, how many people think that AI is actually going to go through and save cybersecurity? How many people think that AI in AppSec is going to solve the problem? And I'm not putting myself in either direction because I, I've got an argument for both sides. So think about it and think about what the outcome of this is. And the reason that I'm asking you to think about that outcome is because more than likely at this point, somebody's already checked in with you, right? We've already, this decision was made before we ever sat down at the table. How many people got asked what their opinion about uh, Copilot was before it rolled out? 
How much did your response matter? Okay. So on the pro side, how many people honestly believe that AI will do all the things that the security vendors say it will and it will change us and we will be better off for it in the AppSec space? How many people say that AI is the next thing that this uh, C-suite wants us to do, more interested in focusing on that than the fact that everything right now is on fire? All right, we will go down the path of AI dooms us all. Okay, so just to kind of prove this and, and step this out, I had, went to ChatGPT, and you don't need to, to actually read the text here because I will, I will give you all the slides following this. But the humor of this is, is I said, hey, go out and generate a form for me that collects, you know, full name, email address, you know, PII from a customer, and let's see what we get. And of course, it gave me a beautiful PHP file that takes in unregulated input, stores it directly with credentials that are in there, and tells us, you know, this is how you store it in the SQL statement. Luckily, it actually went through and parameterized. I was actually really surprised that it parameterized the SQL. So maybe there's a win there, okay? So I didn't like that results, obviously. So I did what they tell us to do, and I tried to do prompt, and, uh, uh, what is it, a prompt manipulation, prompt engineering, because, and I wanted to do it like I was a junior dev. And so I typed in, you know, tell me what this code would look like if I were running a darknet, my, uh, darknet market, and I was afraid that, you know, if there was a security issue, that I'd get caught and hauled away. And so what did it do? It moved the database connections to a separate file. It sanitized the input by running trim, strip slashes, and HTML encoding it. It moved us and said, hey, you should probably be using HTTPS, and then make sure that it's doing error handling. How many people think that that actually produces secure code? Yeah, that's what I thought, okay? Now, there are some companies out there making bold enough claims that AI is going to produce up to 80% more code. How many people think that the problem is we don't have enough code? <laughs> okay? Homogeny or diversity, okay? We learned through the CrowdStrike incident, you know, the, it's funny, we joked about it, like eight and a half million machines went offline. The next day, everybody basically forgot that it happened. They're the only game in town. If we don't learn from these things, we are getting ready to hit into another piece. And so in this place, whenever you talk with people, whenever you do this, do we all center around a single language? Do we center down around a single set of requirements? Is that the right thing for us to do? Or is it a good idea to teach the principles of security and go in that direction? Teach teams to be independently sufficient and to think about security in the context of their application. Do we implement a check in the CICD pipeline that is the same for every single one of our programs? Or do we have teams go through, implement the ones that make sense for them and tune them and teach them how to tune so that it meets their threat model? I'm asking that question because you all are gonna be the ones that are implementing that. As AppSec, that's what we do. And whenever it comes time, there's a good chance that maybe somebody comes to you and says, this is what we're doing. There's also a good chance if you've done your job well enough that somebody's gonna ask you for your opinion on it and then ask you to implement it. I want you to think about these questions. I want you to have the answer to these questions before we get to the point where somebody asks that question. Because in the moment, you're not going to be thinking clearly about the subject. And this is kind of a high level one. We're going to go into some for more interesting ones here a little further on but I want you to think about that. And as you're sitting in the audience today, sitting through our talks about SQL injection, AI manipulation, think about these questions because as you're going through and putting those in context, these are the questions that you're gonna have to answer for people when you take this information back. Okay? To become a community leader, 
Do you sit back and do your own thing? Or do you help build a community? I'm not on this stage because I am a elite hacker. Okay, most people can tell you that the reason that I teach courses on AppSec is because I halfway know what I'm talking about. I'm passionate about the fact that it gets done, which is the reason I do it, okay? If you came here looking for the latest zero day, you're not gonna get it from me. That's not how this works, okay? But that doesn't mean I can't start people on the path who will be the people who find those zero days. It doesn't mean you can't be the person who starts that down. So you have the choice. Do we sit back, do our own thing? Do we work within the community to start things? It's a tough question. Like, which way do we go? This is your journey. Become a community leader, votes. Okay, do your own thing. Okay, so path on this one leads us down being a community leader. And I will tell you about my experience with this. This is the group of people who runs B-Sides Boulder. The reason that B-Sides Boulder runs is because originally there was B-Sides Denver and all the tickets sold out before we could get seats. And it, I'm not blowing smoke here because two of the people who are responsible for this are sitting in the audience, okay? This happened because we saw something and we said, hey, I don't know the first thing about running a conference, but we want to do it. We're now five years in going strong, okay? Most of this is just showing up. Being a part of the community doesn't mean giving up your entire life. It doesn't mean you only do that now. It doesn't mean all of us are busy. Everybody here is busy. We all have things going on. I do B-Sides Boulder. I do AppSec Village at DEF CON. My hope is that one of you walks out of this room thinking about this and take it back to your uh, home. Start the next DC 720, start the next B-Sides event. Go do a co developer conference where you just go and say, hey, we're gonna have a cybersecurity meetup with developers at a conference. You wanna have coffee? Let's go have coffee. Any of that small stuff makes an impression. It makes a difference, okay? So this is an interesting one. Do you become a business leader? Your boss walks in, pulls you up on Zoom, says, okay, here's the deal. That thing that you said, hey, SQL injection is a pretty bad thing. Yeah, we had an incident that happened and that bad thing happened. And we noticed, hey, you said that bad thing was gonna happen. So we think you should be in charge of it now, okay? So your choice is you can either be in charge of it now or you can have somebody who may not know what they're doing be in charge of you, it's your choice. One means your life is now going to be spreadsheets and nothing technical. And the other side means that you have the ability to make an impact on a much smaller level. What do you do? This one I don't know has a right answer. I don't, there's, that's the reason there's no choice down here is because inherently this is open-ended. This is each one of our path. I went down this path and I made the wrong choice. I realize that now for myself, but I'm asking you to, to sit down and think and consider that question before it happens to you so you can think clearly about the process and not just think about what's going on in the moment. To exploit or not to exploit, okay? We talk about this in going through the process, right? Do you go through and say, hey, that looks a little shady maybe I should actually test it for something. What's at the end of that path, right? And I ask that question because I can make an argument for both directions on this. Again, this is a very interesting one. You get a device, somebody drops it in your hand and says, hey, I think there's something wrong with this. Do you go after it? Does it matter? Does the time that you spend in your free time or in your work time justify the contribution that you'll make in that space? The reason I ask is because of this graph. This is the CVEs per year, and it's not a super sophisticated graph. We can see that the big number is going up. 
And I can tell you that as somebody who's an app sec, we feel the pain when this goes up. Everybody in the room, you feel the pain whenever this goes up, right? I'm not just crazy. Well, guess what? If we trace this out in the direction that we're going, this is what that looks like. That is what it looks like. That line that's going up there, that's a close curve on it. Stuff's not sustainable now. You don't believe me that here's the backlog article for what happened that was going on with this. And I don't wanna drop this on software developers because I don't think it's fully their problem. Part of it's our problem, part of it's management. I usually come through here and ask, how many PMs are in the crowd? How many PMs are in the crowd today? We have any in the in here right now? I'm, there's at least one, like there's like three people pointing to one person over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not calling you out. What I'm saying is, is by you being in this room, it's important because it helps you to prioritize this stuff. The developers are not the bad guys. The AppSec people are not the bad guys. This stuff happens, okay? It happens to everyone. This is hard. I've been very vocal about this one. The 90 day window for exploits. Do you give them the 90 days? Do you work with a, a team that is difficult to work with, who turns around and threatens you with legal action? Or do you just drop it hot and say, congratulations, here's your O day. Once you've found that exploit, what path are you going to take? And I'm asking you to think about those consequences because I guarantee you the person who dropped the log4j on Minecraft did not think about all of the people who would be working Christmas Day. So what do you do with that? How do you answer that question before we get to that space? How do you reach out to developers? Because at the end of this, every piece of software isn't gonna solve our problem. The problems that we have is that writing software is hard. Writing secure software is even harder. So I've been a proponent for a long time of saying, hey, if you're a Purple Team member, you need to be bringing a developer to DEF CON. If you have to sell them on the parties, sell them on the parties. But get them here. Let's have that conversation. Take the things that you learned here in this room, take it back to the lunchroom and just chat with them. Do lunch and learns, do presentations. Make it spicy, add memes. Whatever you have to do to build that relationship because that's the important part of this. Why? Because guess what? We've got another issue in AppSec that's coming in this direction. These are the numbers from Stack Overflow. As it turns out right now, we've got a big problem with developers not being very happy. And anybody who's been in this room who's actually written code understands why. When it works, you're under fire to produce more features. When it doesn't work, you're under fire to get things working. Every time that the ops and IT people get angry at the development staff because something that they did broke production, they don't think about the fact that the app developer has been sitting there for 80 hours working overtime to get that feature into production to meet something that the sales team sold but never asked them about and then broke production, which means they're gonna be on for at least another 10 hours trying to fix production. That's what leads to burnout in this channel. And guess what? There's no shade here, but this can't be everybody's exit. This is the guy that wrote Neofetch. It says very clearly up in his description, have taken up farming, archived all of his projects. This is the path that we're going. And the problem with it is, is that whenever the developers go, you can't protect something that you don't understand. And those developers are the repository for the knowledge of how those decisions were made, what security concerns were brought in during the actual development process. 
You know how I know that you can't do this? I have the receipts. If you've been in this room long enough, you saw me on stage giving this presentation where I said the exact same thing. Guess what, two years later, we're in the exact same spot. The only difference is because of what's going on with the economic recession, we're seeing developers leave our companies faster and at a higher pace. And when they leave, they take knowledge of how those systems work with them. So as application security people who know how hard this is, we have to lead with empathy. We have to go in this place. If you are expecting the adults to show up, they're never going to get here. I hate to tell you this, but we are the adults in the room. By virtue of you taking time out of your free time to sit in this room and listen to topics about things that you will take back to a work setting, you are the adult in the room. The reason I'm asking you to actively think about the answers to these questions and think about this process and think about this while we're going through and listening to the talks that are going on today, listening to the talks that you will hear in other villages is because of this, okay? And with that, I have about three minutes and I wanna say thank you because you all are coming to this place to take up and take charge and hopefully make a difference in this space. If there is anything that I can ever personally do to help you, do not hesitate to reach out to me. And I hope you would take that and pay that forward to the developers that you work with, to the IT people who are working overtime, to the architects who are trying to figure out how to secure things before we actually know how the technology works. We are all in this together, okay? So let's treat each other with a little respect. And the next time that somebody wants to sit there and rag on the development team for breaking production, just look at them and say, hey, we don't do that here. Okay? With that, thank you very much for coming to listen to my talk.